Hi everyone, today we've got another 5 quick tips to climb ranked video for you, all about Ari. Ari is a super mobile mid laner who thrives on making picks and bursting down her foes before they have a chance to escape. So the first tip of the day is probably the most important one of the lot and it's all about how to use Ari's charm. So Ari's charm is basically her main identity. It's her key to dealing damage and being useful overall due to it being her only piece of utility. This ability is super important to land as it amplifies the damage of your other abilities to that target. So if you're not hitting it, you're not going to be anywhere near as impactful. So there are several ways that you can increase the likelihood of landing this ability. In lane, you'll want to use this ability carefully. Throwing it out recklessly will give your opponents the opportunity to fight you. And if you get ganked without your charm pre-6, you're probably going to pay for it. Despite this, if you've poked your opponent down, you can search for charm opportunities that may lead to an all-in. We advise timing your charm just as the caster minions die, or pairing it with your ultimate or your flash to help your chances of landing it. So like many other champions, Ari can input buffer her flash with certain abilities. This is exceptionally useful with charm as it allows little to no time for enemies to react to it. Upon landing this, you can follow it with your burst and your ultimate to nearly guarantee a kill due to the amplified damage and mobility from your ultimate. Ari can also ER, which will hide the animation of your charm if used in the same direction as your ultimate. This can be a crafty way to catch your enemies out as they are waiting to see the charm to use their flash or their escape tools. If they can't see it, they can't dodge it and they will probably lose their lives for it. Ari's charm is also fantastic in certain matchups as it can actually interrupt certain gap closers. It's not going to help you versus blinks, for example Ezreal's arcane shift, but any dashes it will interrupt. This is amazing versus champions that rely on their dashes for damage, such as Fizz or LeBlanc. That's going to bring us to tip number 2, how to carry as Ari. So Ari is a burst mage as we've already mentioned, and she has a different playstyle to a typical mage due to her mobility and catch potential. Aside from winning lane and snowballing in a typical match where you just win because of a mid diff, there are actually other ways to carry Azari, and we're hopefully going to explain her main playstyle to do so. By far the most important thing when aiming to carry Azari is vision. It can be really effective when you pick up an oracle lens and keep control wards ready to go. Any chance that you have to create a vision advantage in a dangerous area is an opportunity to pick up free kills on important targets and translate that into a lead. If your enemy face checks you, this means you gain a guaranteed charm opportunity, which usually means a definite kill for you and your team. This is something you should be aiming to do throughout the majority of any game, but even more importantly so when big objectives are up or coming up, such as dragons or barons. If you make a pick on their jungler, that's a free objective for your team. If you make a pick on their support, you can gain a huge vision advantage. If you pick one of their carries, a free team fight, and so on and so forth. The other benefit to vision control on Ari is actually allowing her to flank. This is by far the optimal way to team fight on Ari, getting behind teams and bursting down those high priority foes. If she doesn't have to use her ultimate charges to get to her opponents, she can use them as damage and as an escape after she kills them. Learning how to create flanks through vision will improve your carry potential as Ari significantly. Tip number three is a few tips and tricks for Ari, and a few things that you may not have known that could help you out and be the difference in your games. So Ari's Q actually deals true damage on the return part of the ability, so landing this ability at its max range will deal its optimal burst as it will hit both the outgoing and the return part at the same time. Try to keep this in mind when harassing your opponents in lane. It's much harder to dodge this way and it will pack a much harder punch. You can use your ultimate charges or your flash to reposition yourself so that your return Q lands on your opponent. You'll be surprised at just how essential this is in duels and in teamfights. Ari's W will prioritise low health minions, which is super useful when farming up in lane. It will also hit the last champion affected by your recent auto attack or charm, which really helps when aiming to burst down a particular target in teamfights. Ari's W will also attack faster when you are closer to the target, so getting near them with your ultimate will give them less chance to survive your burst. Similarly to this, your ultimate can be cast on a shorter range to deal the damage quicker and add even more burst. Your ultimate won't actually hit enemies that are hiding in the fog of war though, so use your Q or your E to check brushes instead. You will be able to tell if you hit someone with your Q due to the passive stacks increasing. Ari's Q and her E have exactly the same skill shot range, so getting used to one will also help you get used to the other. The only difference though is that your Q is actually a lot wider than your charm, so don't be deceived by this when trying to catch people out. Let's move on to tip number four, maximizing Ari's passive. So a common mistake people make when playing any champion is not fully utilizing the champion's passive correctly. 
Ari is a really good example of this, and there are a few ways that this passive can actually help outplay your opponents and give you the edge in 1v1s. So first things first, you will heal the most from your W in single target scenarios with your passive. When there are three or more targets, your Q will heal you the most. Make sure you're factoring this in, especially in those intense fights where the heal could actually be the difference between life and death. Typically, your next ability will use your passive to heal you. However, if you actually W and Q inside your ultimate stash, you will heal from all three abilities. This is an amazing way to maximize this passive and surprise your enemies in any fights by healing yourself. So Ari's passive, when it's ready to go, is pretty obvious for your enemies. They can hear a big shiny audio cue and your orb glows green rather than blue so they can just wait until you use it to then fight you. If you're trying to bait an enemy into a fight when you're low health, you can hide your passive by getting it close to max stacks and then proccing it instantly when they fight you. This can be a cheeky way to heal out some of the damage and outplay your enemy in jewels. To combine all of this for maximum damage whilst also benefiting the most from your passive, first get your passive up to 8 stacks, charm your opponent to hit the maximum stacks and then use your Q, W and R. This is a surefire way to hit all of your abilities whilst also dealing insane burst and healing. The last tip of today is all about Ari's matchups. The three matchups we're going to be talking about today are Yasuo, Syndra and Anivia. Let's take a look at the first matchup today which is Yasuo. So Yasuo is actually a pretty awful matchup for Ari. Genuinely just thinking about it you can kind of understand why. His wind wall can negate most of her damage including her only form of CC and he can pretty much outdo her when it comes to mobility. You'll want to focus on harassing Yasuo down with your Q whilst farming. Try to use your auto attacks to proc his passive shield before taking on any extended trades. Do not let him E through the minions and damage you for free and instead just give him some space if he's playing arrogantly. Once you're both level 6 you want to make sure you don't get caught by his third Q as that will allow him to use his ultimate. If he gets overconfident and tries to dive you, you have a decent amount of mobility to outplay him. Remember to make sure that you do not waste your charm on his wind wall. Be super patient with it and either try to bait it out or catch him off guard when he can't see it coming. If Yasuo starts using his wind wall aggressively, then you know you can use your charm in the same way. Look to catch him with a charm and burst him down. Anivia is the next matchup we're going to talk about today and she is an absolute pain in your nine tails. She is easily one of the worst matchups for Ari, but there are a few ways that you can get around this. Anivia's weakest point is her early game, but the problem is Ari's isn't actually that strong either. There's very little chance that you'll be able to take her out solo due to the fact that you won't actually have the damage to kill her through her passive. Once Anivia is level 6, she will push you and keep you under the turret permanently. Make sure you don't get caught out by her Q as she will easily burst you down. This is a matchup that you may struggle to win without your jungler's help, so the best way to play this matchup is to focus on the rest of the map. Anivia will likely outfarm and outscale you, so your best bet is to destroy the rest of the map in the process. Anivia is pretty slow and she's not really that great at roaming, so this is your main route to becoming more effective than her. Shove the lane at every chance you get, especially pre-6, and then gank bot or top when you have your ultimate. Don't be afraid to prioritise helping your jungler in river skirmishes and gaining a lead that way. Don't forget that despite this being a tough matchup, if Anivia plays it poorly and is reckless with her ability usage, you still have the chance to punish her and force her back, choking her out of farm. The third and final matchup that we're going to talk about today is Syndra. It's probably one of the most fun matchups for Ari, as it's basically a skill matchup and can easily go either way depending on how each player does. The main way to win this matchup is to win the poke war. Both champions share similar playstyles in the lane phase of harass until kill range and then look to all in when they've landed their CC ability. So, you'll want to try and dodge Syndra's Q as this is her main damage source and her main path to burning you down. Remember that you have the sustain advantage due to your passive, so this can help you get the upper hand. If Syndra wastes her E combo, you can play pretty aggressively and aim to catch her out with a charm and burst. When Syndra is level 5, you want to make sure you respect her level 6 power spike. Do not get caught out by her ultimate's burst. Once you have your ultimate, if Syndra misses her stun, this is your opportunity to all in. Get close to her with your flash or your ultimate to land your charm and burst her down with ignite. Once again, there is also the option of roaming. Syndra doesn't quite have the mobility that you have, which should allow you to abuse this in ganking other lanes. That's going to wrap up our 5 quick tips to climb ranked video featuring Ari. We hope it helped and feel free to let us know in the comments who you'd like to see next. Take care.